Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's, I have 12 o'clock, and I'm really excited to uh, introduce today's um, uh, faculty awards. You know, we started this online uh, presentation of the faculty award ceremony during the pandemic because we couldn't meet in person. And I think it's really been a terrific addition to what we do because it allows anybody and everybody across the college to hear about the wonderful activities of our faculty and our staff. And so uh, um, uh, we've decided to continue this tradition and um, uh, very, very excited to, to be able to share this with you. So welcome to the college's faculty and staff recognition ceremony. This is actually our 30th year of recognizing important faculty and staff within the college. And today we're going to celebrate many of our best faculty and staff members and honor them for their dedication and commitment to the mission and goals of the college and the university during the 22-23 academic year. It's also a time to honor individuals who have excelled in certain areas of our missions like teaching and research, patient care, customer service, and things like student advising, which is obviously critical. Um, today, we're going to uh, announce the awardees and uh, nominees, but there will also be next month in November a dinner for the awardees at Belmont Country Club where they'll actually receive a physical award. Um, I've invited all of the nominees for each award category to join us today. Um, we'll recognize the nominees, and I mean, to me, it's pretty special to just be nominated for one of these awards. I think that's really cool. Um, and we're going to announce your names in each of the award category. Uh, the honor of being nominated is significant and should not be taken lightly. These are a reflection of your dedication to hard work um, in your field and to those who support um, uh, your work. Um, uh, what we're going to do today is I will recognize all of the uh, people who have been nominated, and then we'll announce the awardee. And then the person who nominated the awardee will say a few words and introduce the awardee. So think about this. like So we're going to announce who was nominated, and then who received the award. And then the person who nominated the person who received the word award will say a few words. We'll also be um, able to give the awardees an opportunity to say a few words also. Um, I would ask that people try to keep their comments relatively brief because we have a number to get through and uh, would like to you know, be mindful of people's time. Um, what, importantly, it's not even possible for us to even think about uh, today's event without thanking our uh, faculty and staff awards committee. This is a big piece of work for them. They review, they carefully review, thoughtfully review everybody who's been nominated um, and, and really work collaboratively to make sure that uh, we pick the very best people for the awards. And I'd also like to congratulate all the folks who nominated people for awards. I know it's work to, to do all this and get the nominations together. So um, the very first award that we'll announce today is the Dean's Award for Teaching Excellence. And there's a number of people listed who I think um, are well-deserving of nomination. And they include Drs. Bindu Menon, Muhammad Musa, Stephanie Pinnell, Justin Pollock, Azza Sheikh, uh, William Suarez, Carolina Wishner, and Yoon Suk Yoon. And today's awardee <clears throat> who's receiving the award is Dr. Bindu Menon, Associate Professor in the Department of Medical Education. She was nominated by the Chair of the Department, Dr. David Giovannucci. David, would you like to say a few words on behalf of Dr. Menon and her nomination? Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Dr. Cooper. Yeah, um, it, uh, it was a no-brainer to, uh, um, to nominate Dr. Menon. Uh, she is uh, absolutely wonderful, engaged, passionate educator. She contributes to uh, teaching uh, in different uh, uh, modes of teaching across all four years of our uh, undergraduate medical education. And uh, uh, one of the things she also does is uh, uh, research, education research. Um, she incorporates students in uh, medical students in research, education research, uh, some bench research. She 
uh, MS, uh, involves MSBS students, and she contributes uh, to multiple programs uh, in the College of uh, Medicine and Life Sciences. And she also has, um, um, uh, she's just a very passionate and engaging person, and this is reflected in uh, outstanding teaching uh, uh, evaluations. And um, and I think uh, Bindu, uh, um, uh, I hope you're on the call. I see you. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, please say a few words uh, about uh, uh, about your uh, teaching uh, style. Thank you, Dr. Juvenici, for the kind words. I'm just honored and touched by this. Um, I, I feel like I, um, I have had great mentors and role models here at UT um, for someone who has um, who always loved teaching but came to it a little late. Um, uh, you know, in the past five years, UT has given me numerous opportunities. So I'm extremely grateful for the in for the opportunities that the institution has provided and a lot of great mentorship. Um, and most of you are in the call here. I don't want to mention the names, but thank you. And um, I think that's it. Well, congratulations, you know, Bindu, this is a really a special award for you to receive and um, uh, very well deserved. All right, the next award is the Dean's Award for ProMedica Faculty Teaching Excellence. There were two nominees, Dr. Jamana Alhinti and Dr. Richard Saman. Um, Richard Saman is this year's recipient of the award. He is a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Surgery. Dr. Safera nominated Dr. Um, Saman. However, Dr. Safera unfortunately is tied up at the moment. He's in the operating room. And so we've asked Dr. Uh, Jason Schroeder, Chair of the Department of Surgery, to do the introduction. Jason. Thanks, Dr. Cooper. Um, every, hopefully everyone can hear. Hi, Dr. Saman, I'm glad you're here too. So it's, it's certainly my pleasure to uh, you know, introduce Dr. Saman to all of you. Uh, Richard and I actually know one another reasonably well because it turns out we live about a block apart. He actually lives closer to Dr. Ali, maybe he knows him better. But um, I've had the pleasure actually of having dinner a couple of times with uh, Richard with some of our neighbors. So Richard's been a plastic surgeon. He came to Toledo having been a faculty member at, a, at another medical school in the state of Ohio you know, before he moved up here. But he's really done a good job. Richard practices clinically, but he's really taken his uh, prior experience and, and his passion for teaching and dedication to students and really allowed students that are interested in plastic surgery to find a home uh, with a good mentor, you know, who is interested in their development. And he, Richard will be able to tell you a lot better than I can, but he has spent, you know, hours outside of his own personal time, you know, helping the students from here. And we, I think we probably have a good cohort of students. I don't know how many match a year into plastics, probably one or two, because it's probably similar to neurosurgery size wise. But, you know, these students, they really need personal mentorship. And Richard's been happy to do that. And together, they've really you know, been able to publish quite a few uh, articles, which is good for the students, good for us as faculty as well, and good for the college. But Richard's done a great job. You know, he he took this on himself. Uh, there's probably not been a lot of glory for him. That hopefully this is a small amount of glory to pay him back a little bit uh, for his hard work. But we're we're proud of him. And Richard, I am honestly very appreciative of the work you've done. I'm sure that Dr. Cooper feels the way as do all the other people in leadership positions that, you know, we have individuals who are willing to step up uh, and do things that might not be in their technical job contract for what they get paid for on a day-to-day -day basis, but they take the time and the effort to support the students uh, and the residents, because Richard helps with residents too. So, Richard, you want to say a little bit about uh, the work that you've been able to do? We're, we're, I am proud of you. I think everybody in surgery is proud of you, but we should let other people know too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Can you can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm really honored uh, and... Um, I uh, thank you all for this award. Um, it means a lot to me. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, you know, Jason and Joe Sfera and uh, our Dean, Dr. Cooper, and the students who also nominated me and pushed for this uh, award. Uh, we, as you may know, in the last couple of years, we created a, a plastic surgery interest group, which turned now to be a, a plastic surgery club, an official group within the university and we have uh, excellent uh, students very motivated um, 
uh, to, uh, to, to do well and publish and do research. Uh, this year, we would have had 20 papers published in PubMed. And uh, some of our students uh, matched at Yale uh, Medical School last year uh, in plastic surgery, which is very competitive um, a place to be. So we're very proud of them and very honored to, to have this top-notch students as part of this group. We do meet um, quarterly and discuss research and papers, uh, send those students to the society meetings to present uh, podium presentations, uh, poster presentations. So we've been very, very productive and we will continue to do so. I think I'm, I'm passionate about this and uh, I think our mission in, 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 in this uh, uh, you know, profession is to produce or to prepare the next generation of physicians and, and uh, surgeons uh, and leaders in the field. So um, again, I'm honored and humbled and thank you for this award. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, Dr. Cooper, for letting me speak. Congratulations, Dr. Saman. This is an honor well-deserved. Thank you. Uh, so the next honoree uh, is uh, Dr. Marsha Paul. She was nominated in the category of Dean's Award for Community-Based Faculty Teaching. Uh, Dr. Marsha Paul is a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Medicine was nominated by Dr. Roland Skeel. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. Uh, in the interest of time, I would like to just read through the nomination that I wrote for her because I think it's concise and uh, tells the important things. Dr. Paul has been teaching at the College of Medicine Life Sciences since 2001 when she became medical director of ed education at Hospice of Northwest Ohio. At the beginning of each internal medicine block, she gives two lectures, transitioning from palliative care to hospice and pain management. All of the COM medical students have hospice rotations with her, where she takes them into rooms of dying patients and discusses the changes that the bodies goes through, what symptoms may arise, and how to treat them. They converse with the patients about what it feels like to be on hospice and coming to the end of life. Uh, they may ask the patients, are you afraid to die? Do you believe in the afterlife? She also discusses with the students the causes of delirium, how to assess it and treat it in the terminally ill patient. She reviews substance abuse disorder, palliative sedation, pain management. As a physician and a teacher, she shares with them her personal guide to success, honesty, humility, and hard work. For over 20 years, Dr. Paul has filled a critical niche in the teaching of our students as well as residents and fellows. And I can think of no one more deserving of this award for the community-based practitioner. Marcia, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Scale for, um, for that. I'm Truly honored, and this uh, does mean a lot. I love to teach the students. I feel it's important um, for them to learn uh, end of life care, but I also think it's important for them to de to develop a memory, something that they can cherish the, for the rest of their life. Um, some interaction with a patient. Um, I will confess that I've been in a little trouble when I first started teaching because when I told the medical students they could. Uh, smoke cigars and have a beer with the patient. That was not the memory that um, <laughs> that the uh, hospice wanted me to create for them. So from there we went to coffee uh, with patients, lunch with patients, um, uh, mud hens games with patients, and different things like that. But I I do enjoy having the hard conversations. Um, um, and, and teaching that uh, aspect with with the students and and um, but uh, but the but the memories of getting to know these patients as people and you know the emotions that go they go through I think uh, the students are you know they are you know they are surprised and they're uh, at 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 the patient who's excited about dying or the patient who's you know, uh, and then and sad for the patient who's afraid to die, and it's just um, it's really a wonderful rotation. And um, and so thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to work with the students, and um, and I'm very honored. Thank you. 
Well, again, congratulations, Marcia. It's very well deserved. All right, so our next award is for the is the Dean's Award for AHEC Faculty Teaching, which is really a very special award. These are people out in our LAHEC, BAHEC, and SAHEC regions who do so much for the benefit of our students. And we had excellent um, nominees this year, and they include Drs. Wilfred Ellis, Daryl Hotmeyer, Laura Kanza, and Amy Reese. Um, this year's award winner is Daryl Hotmeyer, who's a clinical assistant professor in family medicine, and his nominee was Courtney Combs. Courtney, could you introduce Dr. Hotmeyer, please? Absolutely. Dr. Cooper, thank you so much for the opportunity to introduce Dr. Hotmeyer. Um, I've had the privilege of working with Dr. Hotmeyer since 2010, which is when I became the Lima AHEC Center Director, and the 13 years since then have been an absolute privilege. Uh, Dr. Hetmeyer began teaching our medical students in 2008, and since then has taken or has precepted over 60 students. Um, and as I've had 13 years to read student comments on their time with Dr. Hetmeyer, the trends that I've noticed is uh, he allows autonomy and independence, but he does it in such a way that students feel supported and welcomed in his office. Uh, they often note that they start the very first day feeling like a valued employee, um, which is so unique. And many of them comment on the fact that it's one of their most favorite rotations and that they've learned more about the business of medicine as Dr. Hotmeyer um, owns and operates his, his practice in Bluffton, Ohio. Um, Back when I was the LAHEC Center Director, I featured Dr. Hotmeyer as um, one of our AHEC FYI subjects. And I went and spoke with him and I heard all the things that I would expect to hear, but the unique things that I heard was how passionate he is about integrating the students into Bluffton and into the small community that he serves. He often recommends students to go to um, the farmer's market on Saturday morning or attend a high school sporting event. He gives them the local paper to read. And because he takes students for the full length of the family medicine clerkship, uh, the students have the opportunity to create a longitudinal relationship with patients and follow up care. Um, and they just feel incredibly integrated, not only into the office, but into the community, which is a credit to Dr. Hotmeyer. And they also noted his wife, Heidi, who is the office manager. It's just a great uh, community family atmosphere. So Dr. Hotmeyer, thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Yeah, I think you said everything. I, I don't have much to add really. I think um, I try to have an emphasis, I, I guess it's been 15 years now. So uh, an emphasis on um, Telling stories, I think people can relate relate to stories and students as well. So I tell a story that ends up as uh, care is the most important part of patient care. So without caring, we don't get very far. So uh, I try to instill that in the in, into the students' uh, minds, and uh, as part of that, talk about connection and how to connect with people. And in a small town, that means reading the local newspaper or the local uh, internet site, which here is the Bluffton icon. Uh, and so I, I do emphasize that with, with my students and try to connect with the students as well. And I think um, just giving this some autonomy and practice, uh, how, how good are we training our students to do a thyroid exam, for instance? Well, they get, they get a chance to do uh, 100 thyroid exams on the rotation. So, and we go over it, and uh, I think it's an excellent learning opportunity. A lot of times they're third year students, and they're just getting their uh, skills formed. So it's a good good time to review all those things and get repetition going. But I am very thankful for this award. It means a lot after after 15 years of students. So um, yeah, thank thank you very much. Yep. Great. Congratulations, Dr. Hotmeyer. And when you think about the incredible number of AHEC faculty that we have. For you to be in that, what, 0.1%, uh, something like that, uh, it's a, a really an amazing accomplishment because there's so many wonderful AHEC uh, faculty. So the next is a really cool award. It's the Dean's Award for Leadership Staff Excellence. 
Um, this year we had some names that I think will be familiar to many of you. We do an excellent job, including Jamie Doughton, Don Jagodzinski, uh, Dagmar Martin, and Ann Murphy, uh, all fantastic contributors to the college and its mission. This year's awardee is Ann Murphy, the Department Administrator in Neurology, and she was nominated by Dr. Imran Ali. Dr. Ali? Thanks, Dr. Cooper. Um, it certainly is a tremendous pleasure to have nominated Ann and um, for her to receive the award, which is very deserving. Um, and it's very hard to uh, put into words the kind of work um, that Anne does for us. Uh, she's uh, extremely uh, capable individual, very professional, and has uh, um, helped us uh, develop our programs in almost all spheres, whether it's the educational program or the residency or uh, related to administrative work. She's always pitched in. She's a great team player. Um, she um, spends a lot more time than most people do um, uh, in, in, in her job. Uh, she's always available. Uh, unfortunately, I do bother her quite a lot when she's not even working. Um, and she, she always uh, has a smile and uh, does her work extremely well. Um, we, as you know, in the institution are always uh, short of people. Um, and Anne's uh, developed leadership skills in that she not only does a lot of work herself, but also um, uh, delegates well um, to others uh, when, when it's needed. And she's got a great uh, team that works uh, in our department and has made us successful in, um, in, in our jobs uh, because uh, we don't have to worry about uh, things that uh, she takes care of. Um, an exist example I'll quote, and then I'll uh, let her say a few words. Um, was that we have had uh, uh, we lost a co uh, residency coordinator who um, uh, moved up uh, in her career, which was exciting for her and for the institution. Uh, but Anne pitched in and helped uh, in that regard with uh, with a number of different initiatives uh, as we get into the residency season. Um, and seeing her work like that, I think the staff also, uh, the other staff members also uh, do the same. And so, so we are very blessed uh, and uh, the institution is very blessed to have somebody like her. So uh, great pleasure overall. So. Dr. Ali, um, I was shocked and uh, now honored uh, knowing who I went up against to get this award. So uh, thank you. Uh, I am very appreciative um, in working with other cohorts and other neurology departments across the nation. I do, to my core, believe I have the best neurology department in the nation. So uh, it's a pleasure to come in and work every day. And um, the faculty and my staff make it so much more enjoyable um, than I could have ever imagined when I started my career. So thank you. And congratulations. This is obviously well deserved. Um, the next award is, uh, again, another really important one, the Dean's Award for Basic Science Research Excellence. This year we had two nominees, uh, Dr. Stephen Holler and Dr. Uh, Raman. Dr. Raman is Associate Professor in Cell and Cancer Biology and is receiving this year's award. And his nominator was Dr. Ivana De La Serna. Dr. De La Serna. Hi, um, I nominated Dr. Raman uh, for this award because he he's really a model of research excellence. Dr. Raman is currently an associate professor in cell and cancer biology, and his research focuses on triple negative breast cancer, which has a very poor prognosis and there's really no adequate treatment for this type of cancer. Uh, so Dr. Raman's research in this area has been really at the forefront of breast cancer biology. It's really been very innovative and uh, leading to very impactful research, which can, um, I believe, uh, uh, give promise for new approaches to treat this cancer. Um, uh, his research excellence also is exemplified uh, by some of his uh, publications. He's had. 47 publications with 20 occurring at Utilito in the last six and a half years. And he has multiple grants from NIH, R01, R21, as well as uh, other grants from the Department of Defense. 
But I think sometimes trainees can give us a better glimpse of, of what their um, PIs are like because they know what goes on uh, in closed doors. And uh, one of the uh, recommenders when I was uh, putting together this packet was a former student. Um, some of his comments are that Dr. Raman uh, was consistently motivated and guided his team. Uh, he, does, he demonstrated tenacity and a commitment to excellence. So I think that kind of gives you an idea of what Dr. Raman is like and how his research uh, is really uh, at, at the forefront uh, and, and uh, deserves this uh, award of excellence. Okay, so Dr. Raman. Okay, thank you, Dr. Glaser. And that was uh, very nice of you to give a very good comments. You know, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I also thank uh, Dr. JT, my chairman. Uh, the moment he walked in, he pumped in a lot of fire into us, you know. So if I match, you know, 5% of his energy, I'll be somewhere. <laughs> so uh, that energetic uh, individual gave a lot of enthusiasm how to uh, tough it out with regard to writing grants, you know, submitting it, how to revise them, how to rebut them uh, without antagonizing the reviewers, you know, so. So much uh, to say about uh, Dr. JT, you know. So he also gave some of his uh, PDX data to be included in my grant, you know. So uh, and so that it appeals to the uh, reviewers, you know. So uh, I uh, sincerely thank him for nominating me, including Dr. Delay Serna and my student. Um, I also thank Dr. Cooper. You know, we always don't have excellent funding, you know, in those times, he was gracious enough to give Dean's Pilot Award you know, to our department when Dr. JT joined in. That was phenomenal, you know, kudos to Dr. Uh, Cooper. That kept us going and then we were able to win the battle at the end, you know, so that was uh, very nice of him. You know, thank him sincerely for that. Thank you, sir. So this victory is not my victory, it is his team victory. Uh, it belongs to the entire lab, past and the present members and my collaborators. Uh, finally, my sincere gratitude to my family members, I especially dedicate this award to my wife, Kamini, my daughter, Divya, and my uh, sister-in-law, Dr. Kanchana. Without these people, you know, I would not be here at this point. Uh, they are pillars of my, uh, pillars of support along my academic journey, especially at UT. I also thank my father-in-law, Mr. Chinnapan, who was constant support through WhatsApp. And uh, of course, always my parents wishing me, you know, in the soul form. Thank you so much. Very nice. I think you're the first person I've heard reference WhatsApp on, uh, on, a, on an award committee. That's really cool. <laughs> you sound like my kids. <clears throat> Very nice. So the, the next award is really exciting and it speaks to the future health of the college. And so I'm really pleased to talk about this. So this is the Dean's Award for New Investigator Research Excellence. And think about like these are the, the superstars of our future. Um, so we had two nominees this year, Dr. Jing Wan Lu and Dr. Tao Yang. Um, Tao, Dr. Tao Yang will be receiving this year's award. He is an assistant professor in physiology pharmacology and Dr. Bina Joe was his nominator. Dr. Joe. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. Um, I will start by saying that hypertension is a term that the field, people in the field um, sort of attach it to University of Toledo because we have 60 years of history in hypertension research. Many of us on the grid are part of it, but the next phase of it requires that we have very rich uh, dedicated human resources, rich in the sense who can bring in grant money and move the papers along in this area. One that represents that um, culture of having hypertension research as a big theme in this university is Tao Yang. I'm so proud of him. He had this as his uh, main stream of research when he was a graduate student in the University of Florida and postdoc there. We recruited him with the very prestigious Dean's Fellow to um, faculty transition, but he's only been a faculty technically from 2021. So since then, if you looked at what his accomplishments have been, if you're familiar with cricket, he has hit a hat trick 
If you're familiar with baseball, he has had three home runs in grantsmanship, publications, and training. Let me just say a few things. For grantsmanship, he has obtained grants from both the NIH and the AHA, which is a Career Development Award, and an R21 from the NIH. So he became rich in two years to run his lab. What did he do with the money? He published a number of papers, but to mention two of them, he has a Circ research paper, which is an impact factor of 23 plus, and he's a senior author on that paper, and also published one in hypertension with an impact factor of 9.8. He has developed this very important theme in, in his lab that antihypertensive medications are destroyed by microbiota before they enter the system, which is why some of us um, some of some patients could develop resistant hypertension. What a cool idea. And that is his mantra in his lab. He was awarded the prestigious Young Investigator Award from the American Physiological Society in this two year period. And he was invited by the Aging Institute of the New Investigators Forum. What's the third cool part? Training. His postdoc won and was the only one awarded from the University of Toledo when we had a pharmacology colloquium involving the big universities up north. Um, and that speaks to Tao's training of uh, fellows in his lab. Um, he has had over 3,200 citations of his works, and I can only see this star becoming a superstar in the hypertension research area given his momentum. So congratulations, Tao, and the floor is yours. I'm very honored and thrilled to receive this uh, award. And as a junior uh, faculty, actually, uh, it is really challenging to establish a lab, and I really appreciate all the support from uh, the Department of Physiology and Pharmacology, and also the College of Medicine and Life Sciences. And all the support kind of move me to where I am today. And I kind of recall, uh, Dr. Joe mentioned the University of Florida, that experience, yeah. When I was a, actually a, a graduate student at the University of Florida, so I, I learned that the University of Toledo is doing the same, similar research in microbiome and hypertension. That's why I got uh, an opportunity to speak to Dr. Joe at a meeting. And that kind of uh, motivated me to move to Toledo in 2019 uh, as a postdoc. And at that time, actually, it's a really, really, I was not uncertain of what is going to happen, right? Because that's a big move. And I also appreciate all my family and my wife to make that decision. We together to move to Toledo. So, but anyway, there's, uh, it looks like the, the decision was not that bad, right? actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just when you move to Toledo, you can't see the sign. You will do better in Toledo. Yeah. So that's. <laughs> Basically, what is happening to me, I think, yeah, thank you very much for this award. Yeah, thank you. Al, you'll do better in Toledo. Absolutely. Congratulations. Very cool award. Um, so the next is a, another really, really special award, and um, we it's entitled the Dean's Award for Research in the category of Best Productivity. And I would say another way of describing it is these are the towering uh, individuals within the college who are making um, spectacular headway in their research activities. And th the two names we're going to talk about today, everybody recognizes for their incredible contributions for research. Um, so the two names we have before us are Dr. Rujin Gong and Dr. Vijay Kumar. And like, I think everybody on this call that has anything to do with research, like, yeah, those two guys are rock stars, right? Um, this year's awardee is Dr. Rujin Gong, professor in the Department of Medicine. Dr. Lance Dworkin was his nominee, uh, nominator, and um, uh, Dr. Raghi Basali will be presenting um, his nomination. Raghi. Dr. Gong joined the faculty at University of Toledo in 2018. Since that time, he has been awarded two independent five years. NIH R01 awards to study glomerular and diabetic renal disease. He has also had two R01 equivalent type awards from industry sponsors to study the role of melan melancortin hormones in glomerular diseases. He was recently honored by UT as one of the most productive investigator at the university wide 
in obtaining extramural funding for his research. He's internationally known for his work. He's an invited member of National Institute of Health and other grant review panels. He's frequently invited speaker at national and international meetings and at other academic medical centers. He has published over 100 original articles in the, lit in the literature, as well as a number of book chapters and reviews. This includes 25 top tier publications since coming to UT in 2018. Congratulations, Dr. Gang. So I don't know if you, you want to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Asali, for the generous introduction. And uh, well, this is Dr. Morgan's word, but you know, I'm I'm honored to to read that. <laughs> thank you. Anyway, uh, it's a great honor for me to receive this uh, 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 extraordinary honor. And uh, first, I uh, I would like to thank uh, Dean Cooper and uh, my department chair, Dr. Dworkin, and also my division chief, Dr. Mahatra. Uh, for providing my research group with such an outstanding kidney research platform at the U Toledo, and for their uh, helping my research team to make a smooth transition from Brown University to UTMC, and uh, uh, for help us to settle down. Also, uh, my my appreciation goes to my co-investigator and uh, colleagues at uh, UTMC, including Dr. Sali. Uh, who help us a lot with our iCook, and and also uh, Dr. Gohara and uh, Dr. Ghani, who are also in the audience, who help us a lot for the pathology. And uh, I also want to thank my uh, research fellows who actually did the actual work, they did a lot of work, including our recent paper in Journal of Clinical Investigation, JCI. Unfortunately, uh, the leading author has left. And she cannot uh, share the, the the honor with me. Uh, so finally, uh, my research team will continue to strive to build one of the Ohio's best kidney research programs at the UTMC. Thank you all. Very cool, Gong. Very proud of you. Um, so the the next award is a, another really special award. <laughs> Again, I think these names are going to be pretty familiar to people. Um, this is the Dean's Award for Support Staff Excellence, and I would describe it, this is the people in the college that actually make uh, make things work, right? They're the people that support us and um, uh, allow us to do what we do. This year's nominees include Brandy Brown, Brenda Joyce, Kristen McKeon, Carrie uh, Neffer, Joe Ozinski, and Christy Roberts Hoffman. Um, this year's awardee is Carrie Neffer. A research associate in neurosciences, and uh, she was um, uh, nominated by Dr. James Burkett. Dr. Burkett is with us today, and would you please do the presentation? Yes, thank you, Dr. Cooper. Um, I was very proud to have the opportunity to nominate Carrie Neifer, who has served this institution for the last 15 years and even more prior to that, and has been my lab manager for four of those years. Um, I was introduced to Carrie at a very transitional time. My lab was founded right before the pandemic. And so while I was at home taking care of my three-year-old, uh, Carrie basically designed and built my entire biochemical lab for me. She built the large animal behavior facility that we have downstairs for me. And most impressively, uh, she helped us to bring our wild prairie vole colony to the University of Toledo, which is now one of our unique institutional resources and uh, was the one person who was essentially responsible for the success of bringing that unique species here. Um, Carrie has famously strong organizational skills. She has an ability to master new scientific technologies and techniques. She has a positive problem solving approach and she has strong relationships with the dozens of students she's helped me to train and mentor and the others over the years. Um, every professor Carrie's worked for has provided me, provided me a letter for this nomination, and they all said that she was the most essential factor leading to the success of their research programs. And she's a vital institutional resource herself. I have no doubt that they would all steal her away from me given the chance. 
Um, and there's no one more deserving of this award. And so congratulations to Carrie. You want to say a few words? Thank you, Dr. Burkett. I really appreciate your efforts and the efforts of faculty and staff that gave me this award. Congratulations, Carrie. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well deserved. Um, the next award is uh, is a, another really special award. It's the Dean's Award for Early Career Clinical Excellence. So, so think of this as the up and comers who are making a big difference um, uh, on the patient care front. We had two nominees this year, Dr. Hend Elsiger and Dr. Safi Fadi. Um, this year's awardee is Dr. Safi Fadi who's an associate professor in medicine, and his nominator was Dr. Nizam al Tarak. Dr. Tarak, could you please uh, introduce Dr. Fadi? It's really my pleasure to introduce uh, Fadi. I was thinking I have known Fadi for 23 years, which uh, is equivalent to 50% of my age, uh, just to disclose, uh, disclose that. So I have spent uh, more time with Fadi, probably more than my brothers and uh, sisters. So I think I know Fadi uh, really very well. Besides, um, you know, talking about his uh, career, it started at uh, the University of uh, Toledo, and he was my co-resident. We did residency uh, together. Then Fadi did the fellowship at the University of Toledo, and uh, currently. Uh, he's an associate uh, professor at the University of Toledo, so you can see his home grown uh, in uh, Toledo, really. Uh, Paddy is very uh, dedicated to the mission of College uh, of Medicine and uh, Life Sciences. Uh, he contributes significantly uh, to uh, the educational mission, uh, especially for uh, the college. Uh, he's the program director of uh, pulmonary and critical care fellowship. He's the director of um, the MICU, and uh, uh, he does a lot of uh, work. The feedback about uh, Paddy has been always uh, really excellent from uh, fellows, residents, and uh, students. And I cannot think of anyone deserving to be recognized for uh, early career and for his contributions to the College of Kings and Bank Paddy? Thank you very much, Nizam. I'm really honored and humbled to have this uh, award. Thank you, Dr. Cooper, Dr. Asari, Dr. Dworkin, Dr. Skeel, and all my mentors throughout the years. Um, just a brief uh, summary. I've been, uh, it all started when uh, I was uh, chosen to be the program director for the Pulmonary Credit Care Fellowship. Um, so thanks for everyone who supported me through this journey. Uh, it happened during the COVID pandemic, and unfortunately, I was doing a lot of clinical work. Uh, I was working 10 days in the ICU um, every month and seeing 40 to 60, you know, COVID, very sick patients. So it was for, three, for two years, I have to do that. And uh, the administration time was not uh, uh, adequate to do um, most of the um, curriculum that I want to do for the students and medicine residents and fellows. So after the pandemic was done, I uh, focused on the pulmonary critical care. I focused to work with students who are interested in the field and the internal medicine residents. We created a research group uh, to help these students and mentor them and also for the residents. And we were able to um, accomplish uh, a lot throughout this group. So I was able to build a curriculum for the uh, fellowship, including the point of care ultrasound, uh, the pulmonary function test uh, uh, curriculum, the research, the quality improvement, and the uh, procedures um, as well. Uh, and uh, I contributed to the internal medicine residents and the students and the fellows throughout uh, these polls. Uh, so I would like to thank all the uh, supporters um, for this. And uh, I remember um, one uh, um, advice from Dr. Cooper was, uh, you have uh, probably, you know, as a, as a junior faculty, the best thing to do is to, for publications, to have one peer reviewed publication a year. And that was my strive. And I was able to achieve that uh, in the last, uh, three years. Uh, this is a goal that I've been working on for a year um, in association with the residents and uh, fellows. 
And uh, for the future, I am uh, striving to um, you know, keep developing, you know, as a faculty, hopefully achieve some uh, randomized control trials or grant uh, with the help of my uh, colleagues. Also uh, develop more electives, including lung transplant and ECMO electives for my uh, fellows. Uh, I talk to outside institutions so that you have to come with the funds uh, to support lung transplant and ECMO. This is something that the fellows have been requesting. And I was doing fellowship interviews today. And uh, this is uh, something that all the fellows who are coming um, to, to have better candidates, we have, I have to work on this. So we have to come with the funds for this. And also hopefully develop an IP fellowship in prevention pulmonology. We have one faculty that uh, Dr. Asad recruited uh, three years ago. And we need another faculty. Um, we have the numbers we have just to uh, start the uh, fellowship after we create one faculty. So these are the future directions for the fellowship. I thank you all, and I'm humbled and honored to be here again. Thank you. Congratulations so much, Fadi. And for other early career faculty members, just think of how Fadi finished up. Like, I've got plans for this and plans for this, and this is what I'm working toward. Uh, Fadi, that's why you're being recognized because you work towards goals and you meet your goals and you keep working. So congratulations for your efforts. Um, the next is a, another an unbelievable award. Um, what I would describe this is this is the award that goes to the uh, clinical faculty member that everybody wants to grow up to be like, right? Um, this is the Dean's Award for the Master Clinician. Um, there were three nominees this year. And again, these names are very familiar to all of us. Drs. Regi Basali, Dr. Kevin Phelps, and Dr. Uh, Jim Van Hook. This year's recipient is Dr. Kevin Phelps, Associate Professor in Family Medicine, and his nominator was Dr. Linda Spear. Dr. Spear. So this is, is just a true pleasure that um, Dr. Phelps has been chosen for this award. <clears throat> Dr. Phelps has spent his entire career here. When I came in 2006, he was already well established as central to the backbone of the department. He spent quite a bit of time over these years as a residency program director. About six years ago, uh, came to me and said he wanted to step down from that role and dedicate the balance of his career to caring for patients, in which he's done. And um, in addition to that, been an excellent role model for our residents. Uh, led quality improvement initiatives. Uh, he gets 99th percentile patient satisfaction on press gaming surveys year after year after year. Um, I think one of the things that likely uh, led to his choice as the awardee was the overwhelming support that the residents expressed for him as uh, the awardee. Anyway, um, Bottom line, he's a just superb clinician uh, with a sterling character that we all consider to be a role model. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Spear, for all the opportunities you've given me over the years and the support. And uh, to my uh, partners and the residents uh, who supported my nomination, I never dreamed about this, um, but it's a true honor and I'm humbled. Um, I want to thank my mentors, uh, Dr. Johnson, Dr. Mayhew, Dr. Rogers, for inviting me into the faculty to offering me a job out of residency. Um, it's been a privilege um, to serve as a faculty member at the University of Toledo all these years. I am very proud that I've served my entire career here. Um, I'm, you know, married to um, uh, an obstetrician who went to UT and did a residency at UT, and all five of our kids are graduates of UT. So I love the University of Toledo, and um, it's a privilege to be um, a physician here, an educator here, and and, and it's um, this is a true honor. Thank you. Congratulations, Kevin. I, I can say this without a doubt. This, uh, it, you know, you were amongst a really competitive group. Um, you, all of you should be proud of that, and Kevin, it's such a well-deserved award. Um, the next is, again, one for Rising Stars. This is Dean's Award for Staff Rising Stars. We had a number of terrific nominee, nominees this year. Uh, Lindsay Ferguson, Danielle Gluza, Elliot Obernetter, uh, Laura Price, Rebecca Rashley, and Jane Schaefer. This year's awardee is Lindsay Ferguson, Educational Coordinator in the Department of Medical Education. 
And she was nominated by Dr. Bindu Menon. Bindu, could you introduce Lindsay, please? Thank you, Dr. Cooper. Um, I nominated Lindsay Ferguson uh, for the Rising Star Award, but before talking about Lindsay, I have to share about that job um, that she does. The job of education coordinator um, in the Department of Medical Education is very demanding and requires a lot of skills, um, a lot of interpersonal skills, since they have to deal with students, staff, and faculty from all walks of life. And this person is responsible for practically everything for the class of 175 medical students, starting from content organization on the blackboard, collecting um, content from different teaching faculties, uh, several different faculty, um, arranging it on blackboard, um, working with the banner, helping the faculty in the classroom, taking attendance, taking care of their grades. I can go on and on. So it's, it's a lot of um, skill requiring job, very demanding. And Lindsay, I'm um, talking about her. She joined us in medical education year back in May 2022, but I only got the chance to work with her closely this year as we started to prepare for the M2 class that has to start in July. So I started with the assumption that she is new. I need to work with her. I need to help her. And boy, she proved me wrong from the get go. She had it all under control. If any, I needed help. She was there for me. So for everything that I asked from Lindsay this past few months, five, six months, mostly her response has been, oh, it's already been done. Or I have it in my radar, but I'm waiting for this and this. So there has not been one single instance where I had to remind her something. But on the other hand, it's sometimes her asking, when do you want to release the grades? Do you have the quiz ready? Do you want to talk about the appeals? And and I, I have to tell you, and in all these um, months, I've never ever noticed a single instance of where she made a mistake, not even the tiniest one. She, it's been spectacular working with her. She works with other parts of the curriculum, like leadership, students, entities, like instruction design office, IRC, and her communication with all of those has been such a great fashion that I felt like in all these years that I've been working with Rectory, this has been the easiest for me. My weekends were mine. I didn't have to worry about anything. I knew Lindsay will take care of it. And in addition um, to all this, we moved to this new thing called uh, 145, which you know people like me found it's a nightmare working with it and an additional workload. And here comes Lindsay just took it on, you know, like it drew Gen Zer and moved that piece like you know a piece of cake, taking it off out of our hands. So altogether, she has done wonders, and it's hard to believe that she's only a year old in this job. Um, and before I uh, leave it to Lindsay, I'd also like to mention that Dr. Lori Dishitler and several students from the M2 class who are her biggest fans wrote glowing letters of recommendation to support this nomination. So I'm extremely happy that Lindsay got this award because she, I believe she's an inspiration for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Menon. That was uh, raving reviews of me. Um, and thank you everyone else who has uh, helped me achieve this award. I'm very humbled and um, excited that I received this award this year. So thank you. Well, congratulations, Lindsay. And truth be told, right, Lindsay kept on me to make sure I had my stuff loaded up and ready to go for my two uh, presentations in the Thread 3 curriculum. And Again, you, you help keep us all on task. So thank you for all that you do. Um, the next is a, another special award. So think of this as you know faculty guiding others to achieve their full potential. Um, it's the Dean's Award for Advising Excellence. And this year, the names are really quite familiar. Uh, excellent faculty, which includes Drs. Viviana Ferreira, Danae Hamuda, Mohamed Musa, Jesse Park, and GV or Guillermo Vasquez. Um, this year's awardee is Dr. Mohamed Musa, Associate Professor in Emergency Medicine, and Dr. Carl Mattis was his nominator. Dr. Mattis, could you introduce Dr. Musa, who appears to be in the emergency room today? <laughs> Sure, I'm happy to. Thanks, Dr. Cooper. So a student actually approached me and asked if I would help support Dr. Moose's nomination. Um, there were several students that uh, would, wanted to nominate him and were very appreciative of their guidance that he gives them. But I know that he gives guidance outside of just the uh, career counseling within the emergency department. I've um, seen him uh, be a, a mentor in so many other areas. He uh, helped organize an empathy webinar. Uh, he's really um, 
just a, a role model for students in the clinical setting and, and uh, you know, is someone that, again, I think they all look up to and want to become as they, as they uh, get into their uh, clinical practice. And so um, I'm so glad that uh, he was chosen to win this award. Congratulations, Dr. Musa. Thank you, Dr. Mattis. Um, I'm outside the trauma bay right now, so I'm hoping a trauma doesn't roll in. Um, thank you so much. I'm humbled to be amongst the recipients of this award. Honestly, I love the University of Toledo. Uh, it's all about the students, giving them just those, those guardrails that they need. Um, and it's just using our experiences. I want to thank uh, my mentors and my supporters. First of all, uh, my, my God, my parents, my, my, my wife and kids. Uh, definitely want to thank uh, Dr. Greider, my chair, and my previous chair, Dr. Brickman. I uh, also want to uh, mention Dr. Uh, Kleshinsky and Dr. Cooper for all the support. Um, really, it's, I'm humbled to be along uh, with all of you. And to get this from you, Dr. Mattis, this is like amazing. Like uh, this is what th I was lucky to spend a year under you and that ed, uh, and I learned so much from you. This is an award for um, our school, our department, our students to get them on the right path. It's not about me at all whatsoever. And this, I naturally love this. And I just say to the, to the docs that aren't, doing the mentorship, they're missing out. As a matter of fact, right now, I have a second year medical student with me in the ED who is doing more than her ICE uh, requirement. She came in, she's taking calls and calling consultants. It's like, it's what makes a difference for these students. So I know sometimes we like to hover around the minimum, but if we can just do a little bit more is my advice to myself and everyone. So thank you so much. I'm probably missing others to thank. I know we've been on the call for about an hour and uh, look forward to more things for our students. Congratulations, Mohammed. Obviously, a well deserved award. And I'll just make an editorial comment. You know, that it, many of you know that this year we hit a new benchmark for our student um, evaluation of the overall medicine curriculum. And where it's near the top 25% of schools nationwide. And it's people like Mohammed and Coral and Bindu and others who've received awards today who just set such a powerful example for their colleagues. and take care of the students and make them feel warm and welcomed. So thank you. The next is an important award, the Dean's Award for Staff Impact. Again, we have several staff awards and this is the, the people in the college who really do make a powerful impact. The names are not unfamiliar to you. The nominees include uh, Christina Alvarado and Tiffany Lopez. Um, Tiffany is this year's awardee. She is the internal medicine residency coordinator in the Department of Medicine, and Dr. Nizam Al Tarak was his her nominator. Dr. Al Tarak. Yeah, I have known uh, Tiffany for 15 years, and I'm not gonna do the math again to tell you what's the percentage. But uh, really, when I think of staff impact, I cannot think of anyone that has uh, such impact as uh, Tiffany. She is really the backbone of the residency uh, program. We have uh, 60 residents. She managed uh, the residents very well. She's able to multitask, and this is not an easy really skill. Uh, it's a skill that requires a lot of focus. And the work she does is really amazing. Very uh, clean work no uh, problems, very smooth. Uh, this is really amazing, Tiffany, what you are doing. And uh, I'm very pleased that uh, we are able to recognize you for all the qualities that you have and the impact you have on uh, our uh, residents and on our community and uh, on our faculty as well. Thank you, Dr. Altork. I really appreciate that. I'll try not to cry because I'm a crier, so I'll keep it together. <laughs> um, so I want to thank uh, Dr. Osali, obviously, and Dr. Altork. Um, They have been uh, my biggest fans, my biggest support since I've been here in 2008. Um, I would also like to thank the internal medicine residents that I have met. Um, they are truly the reason I do this job. Um, I can also say that uh, I owe Nanette O'Connor in the GME office a thank you every day. She has been an amazing mentor to me. Uh, she's guided me day in and day out. Um, and I also thank my uh, fellow coordinators that I've worked with over the years. Um, it's a close-knit family that we have, and we do support each other every day. So, again, thank you all. I appreciate this. Thank you. 
Congratulations, Tiffany, on a award very well deserved. Um, the next award is for diversity and inclusion. And think of these are the people who make everybody feel like this place is their home um, and treat people fairly, equitably, uh, include others. Um, this year, we have three terrific nominees, uh, Dr. Shaza Uthmani, Dr. Jim Kloshinsky, and GV or Dr. Guillermo Vasquez. This year's awardee is Dr. Jim Kloshinsky, who's a professor of medicine. His nominator was Dr. Basil Akpanono. Uh, Dr. Akpanono is unable to join us today, and so Dr. Asali will be um, introducing Dr. Kloshinsky. So it's my honor to uh, nominate, I mean, to read the nomination for Jim, who I knew, whom I know for more than 23 years, by the way, and which is uh, more than 50% of my age, you know. Um, I knew Jim when he was a student and I was a fellow here. And I'm really, really honored to have the opportunity to read what Dr. Akpanunu wrote. His prominence started with diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative in 2005. When he was appointed <clears throat> the Dean of Admissions following an LCME citation, noted only one minority student in the entire medical school, he brought holistic admission process to the instruction following the Supreme Court ruling at the University of Michigan admission policies. He went to work, involved the community, and traveled to predominantly black institution with aim to bend the curve and achieve success. He was also occupied with issues affecting the Latino population. Success with the achievement of 15% improvement followed in the next few years, culminating in being honored by the University of Toledo student chapter and National Medical Association in 2007. Congratulations, Jim. Yeah, thank you, Raghib and, and my colleagues. Um, I don't prepare comments. I just kind of speak from the heart. Um, Raghib, um, we say this to each other a lot, that we're brothers from another mother. Um, so this is was, exactly what I, I tried to remember that I, I forgot it. So I wanted to say it. That's right. Um, I, I think I might have been the first person Raghi met. I was a naive medical student and he was a fellow on his first day. And I've been honored and privileged to, to, to be associated with him and his mentorship. And again, very humbled with this. Um, I think what means the most is this comes from the department and the division colleagues. Uh, we've been through a lot over the last 25 years, ups and downs uh, through thick and thin. And so I think that's what means the most, um, is that you always, you always come back home. My last comment would be, I, I feel like I've been extremely lucky in, with mentorship and to pull a line from uh, Nizam. Um, for someone that has probably fewer years left on this earth than I've already lived, um, just to remind people um, how lucky we are to have such great mentors and to pay that forward. Um, uh, Dr. Skeel, I see on the line and others, uh, uh, Dr. Apinanandu, Dr. Dworkin, um, and to remember for us to pay that mentorship forward and that leadership forward, I think is really important. So uh, thanks to all, and I, again, I'm so appre appreciative. I'm at a loss of words, really. Congratulations, Jim. Uh, very well deserved. And trust me, Jim does a whole lot more than just look out for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Jim is uh, part of the fabric of the institution and makes the place work. So, Jim, congratulations. Um, the next is, you know, really for our staff, the pinnacle award that's achievable, and that is the Dean's Award for Outstanding Staff Career Achievement. Um, this year, we had four well-deserved nominees. Those include Diane Durliat, Jenny Gilmore, Jennifer Gilmore, Jamia Johnson, and Marianne Schuster. This year, a very familiar name, Jennifer Gilmore, is our recipient. She's the clinical research manager in the Department of Medicine. She was nominated by Dr. Srini Hijibu. Um, Srini is uh, unavailable today, and so Dr. Asali, again, will be 
um, presenting her nomination. Dr. Asad. And this is Dr. Ejibu wrote, Jennifer has been an integral part of the research mission for the University of Toledo in the Department of Medicine. She has been involved in a number of different research projects with a number of different faculty members. I had the pleasure of working with Jenny in the internal medicine department, mainly working on diabetes and hypertension research. I feel Jenny deserves the Dean's Award for outstanding staff career achievement as she has been integral in promoting research in the Department of Medicine. Over the years, she has done outstanding work and exemplifies the values of the mission of the University of Toledo College of Medicine. Congratulations, Jennifer. I don't hear Jenny. Maybe she and Dr. Hijibu are enrolling a patient in a clinical research study. That would be par for the course for the two of them. All right, um, we move on to the last award. And again, I, I view this as the pinnacle award for um, faculty in the College of Medicine, which is the Dean's Award for Faculty Career Achievement. And this year, we have three giants within the college, and I'll say a word about each of the nominees. Um, first is Dr. P.K. Chaudhry. Uh, Dr. Chaudhry has been a giant in the field of um, cancer surgery for as long as I've been here and before. Um, I know I've called PK in the middle of the night on a Saturday night and said, hey, PK, there's a fill in the blank. And he's like, yep, OK, I'm taking care of it. Um, PK has really been a, a, a special faculty member within the college. The next nominee is Dr. Bina Joe. Uh, it's hard to even introduce Bina. Bina is worldly recognized. Um, she's received national and international awards for her cutting edge research in um, uh, hypertension and has spent the last, what, eight years building a, a Department of Physiology Pharmacology. Uh, and we see people like Vijay and Tao and others being nominated for awards based on her leadership and the environment she creates for her faculty. Um, the last one is Dr. Chico Maholtra or Deepak Maholtra. It's Chico, right, Chico? Um, even though Chico's taken the call from somewhere in Utah on the ski slopes today, um, what we all know <laughs> Chico as is that uh, dedicated nephrologist uh, runs the nephrology division, has been here for a very long time. We swept him up from New Mexico uh, many years ago and has done so much for the care of patients. Um, at the bedside, uh, uh, supporting research within the division, you know, really that that stalwart uh, leadership of his division that's become a cornerstone. So, you know, yesterday there was the um, 3,000 transplant. Um, obviously, the transplant surgeons get a lot of uh, a notation for that, which they should, right? I mean, Ken Krop starting the program and Mike Reese and others helping build the program and and uh, Dr. Sindwani continuing that progression with his colleagues. And yet there's no transplant program without nephrology, right? I mean, th these guys are the ones who take care of the patients in, uh, in many ways. And so again, um, we have three unbelievable nominees who all have had a, an unbelievable career trajectory. This year's awardee is Dr. Chico Malholtra, who's professor in the Department of Medicine. He was nominated by Dr. Basil Akpanono. Um, again, Dr. Akpanono is unable to join us today, so Dr. Asali, you will be doing his um, presentation. Uh, Dr. Akpanono wrote, Dr. Malhotra built a strong nephrology fellowship program and participated in the setup and function of Greenfield Health System, the Davita Dialysis, and ended up being the medical director of dialysis partners. This investment resulted in over a six million enterprise dispersed equally to his endowed chair fund, the University of Toledo Physicians and the Department of Medicine when it was divested in August 2014. He embraced the continuous renal replacement therapy or CRRT and was the first to introduce in Northwest Ohio. It should be noted that his push for this type of therapy 
was finally introduced to ProMedica at ProMedica to lead the hospital after the affiliation formalized the training of residents and fellows at Toledo Hospital. He's also well known as a great transplant nephrologist and has been the director of transplant nephrology from 1997 until now. He has maintained active, active leadership at the state level with Ohio Solid Organ Consortium and was the chair of board of directors from 2005 to 2006. Chico has been here for over 25 years, has brought innovative programs and processes and processes to the university, shepherded many university quality programs, provided excellent teaching, and above all, is a good and decent human being. Congratulations, Chico. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I am extremely humbled uh, by being nominated for this award, let alone being selected. There are so many deserving individuals, as uh, Dr. Cooper uh, noted. As I have told multiple recruits, including students, residents, fellows, clinical and research faculty, one of the greatest attributes of the University of Toledo is the camaraderie. There are no silos here. The individuals in the surgical and medical fields, as well as researchers, all get along exceptionally well. Everyone has open doors. This has allowed us to have quite a few fruitful collaborative projects. As a clinician, the patient care here is excellent. My family and I have all had our care at this institution. There are way too many people to name individually, though I must um, thank certain exceptional individuals. First and foremost, my wife, Judy, and children, Nathan and Christian, who've made multiple sacrifices. Additionally, I'd like to thank the Department of Medicine chairs that I've had close association with. A thanks goes to the renal transplant surgeons and staff to help build the uh, renal transplant program to what it is now. A special thanks to the nephrology division faculty members, as well as to our administrative assistant, Lisa Johnston. Once again, it's an honor to be selected for this award. Thank you. Congratulations, Chica. What an amazing career achievement. Uh, well, look, to all of the um, faculty and staff who were nominated for awards today, congratulations. For all of you who nominated people, thank you so much for the work you do. For the committee, which evaluated all the nominations, I thank you for all your work. I know it's a lot of work to review all of these and uh, they care deeply about the selection of the nominees. Um, to all of our uh, people that were listening today, um, if you weren't a nominee or nominator or any of those pieces, uh, you know these these individuals that we recognize today give us a great example of uh, behaviors and things to emulate. Uh, and to all of you, I, I appreciate so much what the college does for our students and our residents for research and our world. So thank you all. Uh, many of you, I will see you at the celebration in November. Please join us. Um, uh, that'll be a very nice evening. And again, we'll get to recognize folks. So thank you so much and have a terrific day.